Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rum on a Couch video number 83. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival and for this episode we're going to pop over to a country I have to admit I wouldn't really expect rum to originate from. I suppose maybe my naivety but then again also over the last several years there's some amazing rums coming out of countries and areas of the world that you wouldn't expect rum to come from either and some beautiful uh, flavours. So I'm intrigued by this one because this is the Newfoundland Distillery Company Gunpowder and Rose Rum from Canada. Great looking model. Swear. Bit weighty. I'm intrigued by this because it has the words aged Jamaican rum, wild Newfoundland roses with kelp, charred birch and sea salts for the gunpowder flavours. I've actually had a couple of gunpowder uh, gins in the past and it's pleasantly surprised me. I know it's gin and not rum, but I'm intrigued. And I'm all intrigued the fact that it does use Jamaican rum. So I'm hoping to get a good uh, sort of wild element to this. Um, roses with kelp, always intrigued. Bit of charred birch as well. This is going to be 40% ABV, so it's not a rum liqueur. So I'm not expecting too heavy on the sweetness. But, well, I'll tell you what, let's give it a go. Got my Glen, Cle uh, Glen Cairn glass, can't speak worse today. Not had a rum yet, so let's rectify that. So this is coming into the UK this year, if not already here. Um, I can't get this open. <laughs> Gotta love a good sealed bottle. There we go. So, 40% ABV, Jamaican rum, infused in Clark's Beach, Newfoundland, in Canada. It is defined over there as a spice rum. Nice little mahogany style colour there as well. And the first thing I get is kelp. Subtle kelp, quite... Um, Scented. A little bit of rose, nothing too much. I wouldn't expect too much either. Roses obviously has fragrance um, as you'd expect. I don't get too much rum, although there is something there. I have to admit, then again, for the spice rum, I do expect to get the spices first, and that is what's happening. And I do get a little bit of that Jamaican slight funkiness towards it. More on the edges of the uh, of my nose there. All right, 40% ABV. Let's give it a taste. Yep, that's rum. I'd say that's definitely Jamaican. Oh, hello. Yeah, so you get the nice little Jamaican funkiness right about there. It's not too defined as a Jamaican rum. There's definitely Jamaica in there. But as again, as expected for a spice rum, I'm getting a bit of a balance. I'm getting the kelp coming through quite nicely. <clears throat> Don't get much of the rose petal, but I think it's more that offering that softer approach. It does have a hit, and it's a Jamaican hit nonetheless. There isn't an age statement on this, but I would probably say... Five, six years, nothing too old. Just seeing what it says on the back of my Bible, it doesn't. I do get the kelp coming through on that second sip again. This slight saline saltiness really hits here in a good way. I do like my saline solutions when it comes to having it. Um, especially in gin cocktails like the Negroni, it can add something quite nice. Obviously, a dirty martini uh, is a great way for me to enjoy gin or vodka as well. But to have it with rum, it's of my memory, I've only really had it once or twice uh, within a rum cocktail. It's not something that's prevalent here in the UK. Uh, I think mainly I had it in Italy. Um, but if used properly, it can offer some amazing flavours. And it does come through. It doesn't shine through, but it's definitely there. I 
And the best thing is, as I breathed in through my nose on that um, sip then, I got more of the kelp coming through as well. There's a lot of different elements going on. It's not too complex. It's not everything's happening at once. But you kind of get a little bit of layers, a bit of waves of this. It's not a bad shout. I have to admit, though, nothing's coming to mind of what you'd do with this. I wouldn't put it with cola, ginger ale, anything like that. Maybe, oh, to be fair, maybe a rose lemonade could work quite nicely. Rose soda water, uh, nothing too bitter, because it's already a little bit on the dry side anyway. It's not overly sweet. Um, this probably would work quite well in a, I'll probably say like a Hemingway daiquiri, maybe. Stirred down... I was say stirred down brown drinks, but stirred down drinks uh, would sort of really shine it through because it's not a vibrant flavour profile. Uh, it's there, but it's more subtle, more scented. And I would be a little bit afraid to sort of add too much richer modifiers to really overpower this. Um, there's no need. And to be fair, it's not that bad on its own. So there's a bit of versatility there. Great on its own. Um, it does showcase the flavours. Maybe not as much as I hoped, but there are nuances of there. And I think that's great. We've got our spice from that's a bit more on the uh, actual, more scented element than just going straight for vanilla, straight for cinnamon, uh, like some other brands we've come across in the past have been. Not a bad show. So we do found the distillery, Gunpowder and Rose Rum. Uh, we'll be heading its way over to the UK, if not already here. Do keep an eye out if you're intrigued enough to give what's a Jamaican with uh, roses with kelp, charred birch and sea salt for the gunpowder flavours could offer. This could be your go. So ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done already, of course, make sure you have your tickets for June the 18th for Manchester Rum Festival 2022. Same venue as last year at McCure Hotel in Piccadilly Gardens. Tickets are just £25 and you're able to enjoy everything within. The only exceptions, of course, are the cocktails from the Liars Club, the pop-up bar they will be hosting, as well as the food from the Yamin, who are my cold food uh, suppliers all the way down from London. There'll be also hot food available from the Cure Hotel as well. We've also just signed up with DJ Dom, who was our DJ the last couple of years, bringing the Caribbean and Latin American vibes. So you have a fantastic day out. What I will also say is there's going to be many, many opportunities around Manchester Rum Festival to take full advantage of. We're working together with different brands to make sure there's things both before the Rum Festival to experience as well as after. So do keep an eye out on our socials. Do keep an eye out on our website. And of course, if you already have a ticket, there's some opportunities there to get yourself some exclusive discounts at these venues, both before and after Manchester Rum Festival on June the 18th. So ladies and gentlemen, I will hopefully see you not just then, but also for the next episode of Rum on the Couch. Enjoy.